thing I think is super important is that um, how many countries do we have in the world? It's like 170 something at this point. And the fact is that many of them are succeeding at the same time. So we don't have to choose, is it the US or China? Both can succeed using their own business model and, and their own political model, and they're very, very different. Uh, and actually the world is a better place when both of them are succeeding. Uh, we had the same issue. I was an advisor to the government during the preparation for Brexit, and it was all very either or. And I'm like, well, why can't Britain succeed and the EU succeed at the same time? There's no reason this can't happen. And people were like, whoa, that's a mind blowing thought. Like, really? It, surely it has to be either or. It's like in a divorce, right? Oh, wh who's going to do better? You know, one or the other. Yeah, what if they're both okay and they, they make their way into a new life? So, um, I don't think we have to choose, but I do think that the models that are being chosen for these places are all very different. And I don't buy into the assumption that China is the future and the U.S. has already lost its place in the world economy. In fact, what I see is absolutely the opposite of that, that the direction of travel in China is, is, inimical, is inimical to innovation. Um, things like their social credit system, uh, which I think it's very hard to say to people, I want you to, in fact, I require you to um, agree to the party line and behave according to the rules. Oh, but when you go to work, I want you to be really, really innovative. You know, it's just, that's not how humans are. They, they become innovative by pushing boundaries and testing the rules and breaking things. And, and the U.S. has much more that kind of ethos of, and, you know, the, the famous line, you know, I think it was break, break things faster. That gives you a lot of innovation and an acceptance of mistakes that you don't find in, in the Chinese uh, culture and ethos. So I, 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 yes, they have a large number of people. Yes, they're, the standard of living is rising. But does that mean that China is the future and that displaces the US? No, not at all. Um, so I don't know, maybe I think, yes, you're, the answer to your question is the old frameworks are not answering the question very well. We do need new ones. And, and in fact, my next book that I'm working on is very much about coming up with a new framework for reorienting ourselves so that it's not so binary, uh, so that you can make your way forward without um, being stuck in the, again, it's like, like I said, you know, throw math over the economy, it's like a veil and it creates a certain structure or you throw a story over the economy, it creates a certain structure. One of the stories we had in America is that, you know, it's worth working as hard as you can to own your own home. Yeah, but that's not true anymore. You know, you could work really, really hard and never be able to own your own home because of what's happened to prices and, and inflation is back. And so we have to come up with both new stories and new ways of projecting order onto chaos.